Well, how about some other uh, balanced incomplete block designs? Uh, there actually is quite a number of them. These balanced incomplete block designs I've put up on the board here are called combinatoric. You see, in this design, this is the number of times four things can appear together in pairs. And here's an experimental design which is really constructed by taking all possible combinations of four things in groups of three. So we call them combinatoric designs. Do you recall your combinations formula? The combinations of n things taken r at a time is equal to n factorial divided down by r factorial times n minus r factorial. For example, what would 5 uh, C4 be? What's the number of combinations of five things taken four at a time? It'd be 5 factorial over 4 factorial times 1 factorial or on all or altogether five combinations of five things taken four at a time. Let me show you the corresponding experimental design. Here's a balanced incomplete block design in which there are five treatments. See, one, two, three, four, and five. The numbers indicate the five treatments, but I can only jam four w within a block. And how would you get about to use such an experimental design? Suppose in those uh, five treatments for five different kinds of gasoline that you wanted to check out, and yet you had to test them out on a series of different cars, and you were worried about car-to-car -car variability. Well, then your blocking variable would be cars, see A, B, C, and D, and you would try out the four gasolines on each of the cars. You only have room or distance in time to do four gasolines, you, and so you would run the experiment in this fashion. Well, how about another experimental design in which there are five treatments, block sizes of three? It'll turn out that requires a uh, requires ten blocks. That's a combinatoric design. All possible triads of the five numbers are shown here. And what about uh, if there were five treatments and block sizes of two? Here it is right here. Here's another balanced and complete block design for that situation. Now, suppose I move over to a larger design in which I have uh, six uh, treatments, okay? Let's imagine a six treatment situation, but I can only get three treatments within a block. There are only, there's only room in the ovens for three of the units to be cooked at one time, or there's only room on the machine to mill three items at one time. And I'm worried about machine to machine differences or from oven to oven differences and so forth. How big a design would I need if there were six treatments in block sizes of three? Well, the combinations of six things taking three at a time equals 20, and you need 20 blocks. See, that's a lot of runs, isn't it? There'd be 60 runs altogether. But it turns out there are other balanced incomplete block designs which are not combinatoric, and we see one of them right here. Here's a balanced incomplete block design in which every treatment appears with every other treatment twice. Uh, it's six treatments and block sizes of three, but you will notice there are only 10 blocks. So this is not a combinatoric balanced incomplete block design, but it is nevertheless a balanced incomplete block design. Now, I happen to have an example which, in which we use this particular experimental design to show you. What happened in this instance, there were six different kinds of carpets which were manufactured out of various combinations of artificial fibers. And when it came to test these carpets, the testing machine only had positions for three carpets at a time. And so we had the problem of coursing through these six treatments, resetting the testing machine each time, every time we got rid of three carpets. And we had to get all the way around all six treatments. And so let's look at the very experimental design which we evoked. We evoked the one there on the blackboard, but let's see what it looked like when we got around to running it. Here's the experimental design. And someone's going to say right away, that doesn't look like the experimental design you showed me on the board a minute ago, Stu, and I'll say you're right. It's been run in random order. The sequence of the positioning of the rugs on the machine was randomly assigned, and the actual block, see, that was the first set of three run, the number, the block that was chosen, those blocks were also chosen in random order. But that is the very same design I just showed you. It is important, you remember, to be sure that some aspect of randomization attaches itself to the design. In this instance, the word, which is in, or the sentence, which is important for this experimental design is this one. There are six treatments. The block sizes are size three. There are 10 blocks. Each treatment will appear five times, and each treatment appears twice with every other treatment. Well, what do you say we see the observations which we uh, got when we ran uh, this particular set of data? And here you see them. And now what you would not do is the following. To get the average for treatment four, you could naively collect all those fours together. That observation, and this observation, and here's this observation over there. Go around and pick up the fours, the observations, four, and take their average. Take that naive average. If you were to do that, you would be in error. What you should do is get the adjusted treatment 
averages. Well, I happen to have uh, the calculations of the adjusted treatment averages here, and I just thought I would quickly peddle you through them. Uh, this is something you can look up in any good standard uh, statistical textbook, but just to show you, give you a feel for it, we're talking about getting the adjusted averages for balancing complete block designs. What you'd do, first of all, is you'd get the uh, treatment totals. Here are the treatment totals for those six treatments, and you'll notice that all we'd have to do is divide down by five to get the averages. And incidentally, treatment five looks to be the best. You see, we want the carpet that wears least, and so low observations, low results are interesting results. To do the calculation of the adjusted treatment averages, what you have to do is work up these finagle factors, Q sub J. Now, Q sub J is the K from the sentence times the treatment totals minus B sub J. And B sub J turns out to be the totals of the blocks which contain treatment J. The totals of the blocks which contain uh, treatment J. After you get Q sub J, it's not a very hard uh, calculation to get the little tau sub Js. These would be the quantities uh, which you would find in your mathematical model. This is tau sub J in the mathematical model by evoking this little equation. And then um, 